decay. <coughs> Now the thing about time apportionment, okay? This is where we always see students, if they are not careful, they make mistake in the exam. Now let, let's put it this way, okay? So the example. I use a salary per month or 2,000 ringgit, okay? Okay, then my defined value of the accommodation let's say is for instance put 6,000 okay define value of accommodation 6,000 now we, we look at a few cases okay now case one okay let's say you are employed for 12 months and your accommodation benefit is 12 months. Okay, this is my case one. Alright, now case two. Let's say you are employed for nine months. Accommodation is nine months. Okay, then case three. Employed for 12 months. Accommodation for nine months. And case four. Employed for nine months. Accommodation for six months. Okay. So in exam, we do not know which one the examiner will test you. So you've got to be very careful about how to do the apportionment. Okay. Now, so if you look at my 13.1 A salary, in this case is 24. This is 18. This is 24. This is 18. Okay. Correct. Right, huh? So now I'm going to work out the value for 13.1c, okay? The value for 13.1c. Now, we normally take 30% of 13.1a, okay? We take 30% of 13.1a. Now, so the 13.1a already reflected the basis period of your employment. So now you're employed for 12 months. So the 30% of the 12 month will be 7 to But if you employ for 9 month, the 30% will be 5,004. 7 to 5,004. Okay, then you take the defined value. Now when you take your defined value and the defined value must reflect back the exact period that you are having for your 13.1a. So if your 13.1a is 12 months, then obviously defined value must be 12 months. That's why you compare with 6,000. Okay? And then you choose the lower where the value you tax is 6,000 then, okay? <clears throat> now, in case 2, you only employ for 9 months, right? The period is 9 months. Then you can't take 1 year defined value and compare with 9 months 30%. That's why you have to adjust it for 9 months also. So after you adjust it for 9 months, your value is... 4,005. Okay, then you choose the lower, which is also 4,005. Alright? Okay. Now, the third case right now, uh, my defined value should be for how many months? 
you only get nine months accommodation but the the thirteen one A is twelve month so you cannot put four thousand five here right? you still have to go back to six thousand compare and choose the lower so the lower will be six thousand now you don't do that then your answer will be wrong only so imagine if my thirteen one A let's say my defined value is not six thousand if my defined value is let's say nine thousand then you go and put other figure okay let's say you go and put four thousand five for six months over here then obviously your answers will be wrong so this one must be consistent this is 12 months, this is 12 months, we compare it in that way, okay? Now, how about this? This is 9 months a com 9 months benefit, sorry, 9 months employment, right? So you must take 9 months accommodation and compare. So you choose the lower, you get 4,005. But then we notice in case 3 and case 4, my employment period is 12 months but my accommodation is 9 it's not for the full period so in this case the value that you assess here is not right that's why you time a portion since it's for 12 months value you only want 9 so you just take 6000 times 9 over 12 now eventually you still get back to 4005 okay but you have to do it like that now like in this case where we're going to apportion them into 6 months but then your employment is only for 9 months so it will be 6 out of 9 then you will get 3000 uh, that's how you do it okay so that's why you must be very careful when it comes to apportioning the period you must look at how long you're employed and then how long is the accommodation benefit okay now we take a look at page 336 we look at Samuel now Samuel works as a marketing executive with MTR he received the following for 2013 the gross salary is 90,000 entertainment allowance is 24 but his actual spending to entertain client is 25.7 now spending is deduction eh? so the one is for deduction okay now reimbursement of business expenses is 11,000 so money that he spent for the work he claimed back 11,000 and traveling allowance is 1,000 a month okay just based on this alone, before we start looking at the accommodation and stuff like that, work out how much is 13 one a Okay? This one very fast one. Right? One minute so you can do it. Okay, work out how much is 13 one a Give two minutes. Okay, so for purpose of 13.1a, now salary is 13.1a, 90,000. Alright? 
the entertainment allowance now all allowance you must tax if got exemption you minus deduction you minus at the bottom not here here you only minus exemption so no exemption for entertainment allowance so 24,000 you tax it okay reimbursement of business expenses okay now you claim back money you spend for business do you call this as a gain got gain or no right the sign nil you don't tax this it's not a gain to you okay traveling allowance so all allowance you must tax so 1000 times 12 but traveling allowance you get up to 6,000 ringgit of exemption so there's a 6,000 exemption so in total my 13 1a comes to 120,000 okay case one now Samuel was given a house rented by the employer for 5,000 ringgit a month <clears throat> now the house was too large for his own use and Samuel's usage would only be 70% of the area this house benefit given for 9 months in 2013 and Samuel has to share it with another employee so what's the value of 131C okay case 1 Now, first we take 30% of 131A. Okay? So the 131A we calculated is 120. So it will be 36,000. Then you must take defined value. Okay. What's the defined value? How many thousand? Okay, five thousand per month, right? You times how many month? Twelve month. Okay. What else do you adjust? Sharing. Okay. Times what? One over two. Some more? No more. You say share. Too large for his own use. Eh? Adjust or not? It's adjust, right? Say so times. How many percent? Seventy percent. So you're gonna get twenty one thousand. Now take the lower of the two, so it's twenty one thousand what you assess okay now look at case 2 now Samuel was given accommodation in a hotel for 3 months and subsequently in a condo for the remaining 9 months in 2013 the value of hotel accommodation paid by the employer was 9,000 ringgit and the condo is owned by the employer. The rateable value determined to be 1,006 per month, economic rent 2,000 per month. Now for both accommodations, Samuel has to share it with another employee. Now Samuel is a service director of the company, which is a control company. Right, work out for me. What's the value of accommodation? Mm. Oh yeah, ma. Nine. Nine oh nine months only. Ah, yeah, sorry. Ah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see. Ah. You got time a portion for nine months. So nine over twelve. So the value will be fifteen seven five zero. 
sorry I missed that alright okay now work out for me case 2 you try this more adjustment now You have to do the hotel and the house separately. Okay, they are two different categories. You cannot put them together. So the hotel first are. You must take 3% of 1A, which is 120,000. Now the hotel you stay for 3 months, so you take 3 out of 12. That will be 900. You won't do adjustment for sharing. Okay? The adjustment is only on the defined value. Percentage will never be adjusted. So the sharing issue does not affect you. Follow up. Okay? Okay. Then he's given a condo. Now we're going to take 30% of 13.18. A which is 120 so 36 then we're going to take defined value now this house belongs to the employer so there's no rental so when there's no rental the second one is what? the rateable value so you must take 1006 now 1006 for 12 months and then you share it with another employee right? So you apportion it into half. Okay. So you're going to get this as 9,600. And we pick that as uh, lower. But then you only stay in the house for 9 months. So you have to time a portion once more. 9 out of 12. So value is 7,002. Follow? That's how you do it when you have accommodation in hotel and also in the house. Okay? Now there's no issue about being a director, right? Because this is a service director. Okay? So service director, the rule is a normal rule. Okay. Last one, huh? Now assuming that Samuel is a non-service director of MTR, a controlled company. He was then given accommodation in a rented bungalow. The company paid rental 6000 a month. House was too large for his own use. And Samuel usage will only come to 60%. And he shared the house with another employee. Now this is very straightforward. Being a director, non-service director, your leaving accommodation is based on what? You don't compare, right? You straight away take the... Defined value. How much is the defined value? 6,000 ringgit per month. Now anything to adjust? 
usage can i adjust can or not usage cannot right once you non-service director of control company usage is not relevant so you adjust the sharing times half times 12 months right so the value is 36 follow it's very simple huh? okay now i will continue further then we see one last example okay okay so when you do tax com for employment income you will have all your 13 a for example like your salary okay now i just put figure in uh. okay for example your entertainment allowance now let's say 6000 now for example we have traveling allowance let's say 7002 now but you're going to get exemption 6000 so you tax 1002 okay right not okay then we have 131b now let's say you get a benefit for instance uh, you get a free mobile phone line that the line belongs to the employer so it's exempted okay then you have 13 1c okay leaving accommodation now let's say you stay in a hotel lah, okay take take three percent of fifty seven thousand two as your 13.1a so 1716 now when you add up all these we call it as gross income right 58916 now what I want to show you is what happened after the gross now after gross income you're gonna have deduction correct not so what you're gonna do now is after the income you're gonna have deduction okay when you want to claim deduction, now I will only focus on those deduction that you see them regularly. Okay? Now the detail of the rules I'm not going to discuss again. Now the deductions that we're going to have here, usually you're going to see entertainment expense. Okay? Now let's say we have entertainment expenses. Now I'm telling you the actual amount is 6003 now there's a law in the act called section 38a okay section 38a that says what whatever you claim for the entertainment cannot exceed your allowance that's why if your allowance is six thousand you spend six thousand three you only claim six thousand three all right you only claim six thousand three now let's say we have traveling expenses Okay, we have traveling expenses. Now, it's all for business traveling. Okay, it's all for business traveling. Okay, assuming that your traveling expense is... Now, don't write first. Huh? If let's say my traveling is 900, can I get deduction then? Then, uh, I spend actual traveling 900. Will I get deduction later? Yes or no? No, right? Why? Because before you claim, you must reduce by the exemption, right? Because the government gave us 6,000 exemption. So whatever for the first 6,000 also got no deduction. So that's why if you say you only spend 900, then you will not get deduction at all. Can you say not? Now, of course, to you is your, you untong already. Uh. You eat untong 5,000, one. Because by right, if you follow last time, when there's no exemption, we will tax 7,2. Then you actually spend 900, then you minus 900 only. Correct, correct not? But now at least you get up to 6,000 more. So that's why this is what they are arguing. Lah, okay? So you will not get deduction because you spend 900 and you already have 6,000. But what if I spend 7,000? Right? Let's say I spend 7,000. Right? That means I, I end up taking my own money and pay for traveling. Correct not? So if I pay extra up to 7,009, now you still minus out the 6,000 because of the exemption but at least you still can minus another thousand nine see huh? 
uh, it's not the same as entertainment entertainment you restrict to whatever allowance you have right? this one we don't restrict you still can minus can see or not? now but obviously if you spend less than that then you may not get deduction for example you tell me what if i only spend five thousand two uh, then you only get you get nothing at here five thousand two minus all the exemption you left with nothing follow okay now this is how you deal with business traveling expenses now these are all the things that you can minus usually okay now if you also pay for your professional membership the employee is paying okay the employee is paying so like you are an accountant you pay to your professional body that your work require that membership okay you must be working in the same line that you need that membership uh, let's say you pay 800 then you can pay all right now this thing is a bit tricky because you can pay for your own membership your boss also can give it to you your boss says, i pay for you now if your boss pay for you then there's nothing to tax them the inland red the, the public ruling say it, if your boss pay for your membership fee is not subject to tax but if you pay yourself you can claim deduction so it's good can you see not okay so this is what we're going to see here now these are the main things that we see as deduction so after you claim all this deduction then you will have your adjusted now there will be no ca for employment so that is my statutory income okay now we're going to see a long question that summarizes everything about employment okay so just turn to page 337 the requirement is in page 338 okay Kemi is employed by H. Sandram Berhat as a professional engineer. Okay, her employment was terminated on 30th September 2013. Now, during the nine months employment, she received the following. Salary, 6000 a month. Okay, entertainment allowance is 5000 she incurred now she incurred that means she's spending right so what is that deduction correct right okay this is deduction now let's just highlight this so that we remember there's a deduction here okay okay there's a telephone allowance for making business call now we get exemption for quite a number of allowance correct right now give me allowance that exemption is uh, given traveling is one uh, traveling got 6,000. Some more? What other allowances got exemption? One? Traveling got one, some more? Uh, what else? Besides traveling, how is it more? Some more? Uh, sorry? Say, what, what, what do you say? You just say something, right? Some more allowance? Got exemption one, besides traveling. Childcare, childcare got limit, right? How much? 2004. Some more, you must have a child there. The age is 12 and below. Alright? Some more? Huh? Travelling? Sorry? Medical. Medical, uh. medical allowance. Uh. Where got medical allowance? Medical got benefit, no medical allowance. Uh. Uh. Some more? Huh? Bill allowance. Uh. Meal, oh, okay, correct, correct. Meal allowance, all right. Food, come on. Wow, you got study or not? Ah, ah, hui jia, sui jiao, zhi fan, sui jiao, di ru, ma gan, di ru. Meal, come on. Parking, oh, parking, meal. You are okay. Ah, these are all the allowances that you get exemption. So got telephone, no? Telephone, no? Telephone allowance. You are. 
not sure no or not sure no telephone don't have okay telephone benefit got your boss pay the bill get exemption telephone allowance got no exemption so this one no exemption okay all right now private expenses reimburse tax or not private expenses personal one yes you tax this okay there's a company car given on 1st april 2013 cost of car when new was 230,000. now the car is seven years old one. company bought it second hand for 90,000. a driver is provided as well employed at the salary of thousand two the car benefit shared with another employee the private usage by Cami was 60%. Formula method used to ascertain the value of a car benefit. However, Cami has to pay for her own petrol. And the cost of petrol for traveling wholly relating to her duty has been determined to be 3,000 ringgit. Now, so all the while we see petrol benefit is given. Now there's no benefit. Some more you gotta pump yourself. And this petrol is purely for work. So you can you claim deduction already. Huh? The one you claim deduction. Okay. Alright, now there's a living accommodation in a fully furnished house. Fully furnished means there's a benefit, right? Furniture. Correct not? There's a benefit. Now the house benefit withdrawn on 30th June. 30th June, they take back in. Age rented the house at 2004 a month, inclusive 400 for the furniture. The house is being shared with another employee as well. Cami is required to to make monthly payment. Uh, so it's the word to make. Uh, required to make a monthly payment of 600 ringgit. Now you need to pay rental. Uh, that means you will claim deduction. So we will highlight this as well. Okay, she was given an interest-free loan of 100000 a few years ago to buy a car. Now the purpose is to buy a car, which means you get exemption. Now the loan amount is not more than 300000 Anything up to 300000 everything is exempted. Okay, so the rule I follow on. Anything up to 300000 everything is exempted. Now the loan balance as at 30th September 2013, 30000 the employer incurred an interest of 2,000 ringgit up to 30th September and upon termination, Cami outstanding loan had been waived by the, by the employer. I mean, the employer said it's okay, 30,000 also don't need to pay. Okay? Now, Cami was given a free broadband connection where H paid 900 ringgit for the line. She was also awarded the best productivity worker and given a gold bracelet worth 3,000. Now this kind of so-called award, innovation, best service, productivity award, correct not long service award for exemption, right? How much is exemption? Yes, exam up to two thousand ringgit each year. Now there's a professional membership fee to the engineering body, two thousand ringgit, but this is paid by the employer. You didn't pay, eh? the employer is paying. Now in that case. This is in 13.1a. It's your benefit. I mean, it's your membership. Your boss is paying for you. But because it's for work, now this is not subject to tax. Okay, other details. Cami EPF contribution is 5940. So this is relief really here. Okay, she purchased it with the life insurance she purchased life insurance a few years ago with a premium of 1008 now this goes together with the EPM uh, and she's taken an annuity policy with 600 okay a deferred annuity can I can I write carefully deferred annuity add the word deferred annuity okay uh, so the deferred annuity is 600 now she received 2004 single tier dividend from Maxis. Now dividend you don't tax, right? So let's just put a nil there. Now there's an adjusted rental from letting a house she newly acquired in January 2013 amounting to 36,000. The house financed using a loan taken by taken from HSBC 
where she incurred an interest of 12,000. Now you tax the rental, you allow the deduction, correct? Right okay. Now adjusted loss amounting to 18,000 for letting a shop where maintenance and support are actively provided. Now maintenance support provided means the rental become for A. Uh, they become business rental. Okay. Now Cami also invested in some stocks and received the interest. So 1000 a from non-convertible debenture of listed company approved by Securities Commission. Now non-convertible approved by Securities Commission. Okay, this interest is tax exempt to individual. Alright. Now there's 2000 ringgit of convertible loan stock approved by Securities Commission. Now once it's convertible, there will be no exemption. Now can we personally registered for a broadband where she paid thousand two during the year? So broadband you got relief, correct not? But only until twenty twelve. Last year, no more. 2013 onwards got no more relief. Huh? So just put a nil there. Okay, during the year she has made various donations, donating to approved sports body. Project of national interest, approved charity. Okay. Now Kemi has legally adopted a child, age eleven year old. She incurred two thousand five on education policy, six hundred on medical. Now this is also relief, education, medical together. Now she deposited seven thousand ringgit into the national education savings scheme. But she withdrew 1005. Now, this is also for relief, right? Relief for NESS account is up to how much? 100,000, 6,000, right? Not 6,000. But you withdraw 1005. You claim the net, correct? Not? So, in that case, you don't claim 6,000. You can get 5,005 over here, the net saving. Alright, so that's a question. Okay, let's, come, let's try this. Okay, which income that you're gonna start first? Four? Eight. eight. Got four here, huh? No? Alright. Which is the business rental. <coughs> How much is that? Adjusted income? New. Am I right? They mentioned to you that this adjusted loss from the shop shop lot. So the current year business loss is eighteen. Okay, four A done already. Now we move to four B. Employment. Thirteen one eight. Now we have salary. So the monthly salary is six thousand. Okay, tell me six thousand times how many months? Huh? How many months? Nine. Yeah. So fifty four. Entertainment allowance five thousand. Telephone allowance nine hundred. Uh, 
a private expenses reimbursed. Okay, now then you have the next part is to do with the car, alright, so the car benefit. Now since it's car then it's benefit, you leave space, lah, huh? okay, leave space. So you're going to have a few more lines over here. So 13.1b. Calculate for me the value of the car value. I'm going to use the formula. So formula means you must take the cost, right? How much is the cost? 230,000. No. 90. Divide by 8 <coughs> times 80. Okay. What else must you adjust? Huh? Okay, 60%. Some more? Six month. Is it six month? You start giving in April, right? So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Six month. So six over twelve. Anything else? Sharing. She share the car with another employee. So multiply by half. So the benefit will only comes to thirteen fifty. Alright. Okay, so besides the car benefit, she's also given a driver, correct? Now you're gonna use the same basis to derive the value. The value for driver is thousand two a month. Six month sixty percent sharing. Two one six zero. That's all, okay. All right. Now the next paragraph is on the house fully furnished. Okay, fully furnished. So fully furnished means you're gonna get furniture. What's the PV for fully furnished? Two hundred and eighty. 
Okay, uh, you cannot remember, just look at the question. Alright, 280. Now, the 280 you multiply by how many months? Six months. Because withdrawn in June. The house also share, right? So once you share the house, then the furniture you share as well, right? So a portion by half. That's 840. Okay, right, next. Now the accommodation value uh, I need to determine here underneath. The team one C. Okay. Now we're gonna take thirty percent of one A. So I don't know what's my one A. So you just stop here, lah, okay? And I'll compare it with the defined value. And the defined value is two thousand. Correct, huh? Four hundred is for furniture. So you take out is only two thousand. Okay. So two thousand, and then multiply with how many months? So which one is correct? 6 or 12? 12. 12. Both also wrong. 9. See, you all forgot the employment 9 months only. Right? You work for 9 months. You compare with 9 months. No? Correct not? Now I know you stay for 6 months. You apportion later. Ma. So you must take 2000 times 9. 2000 times 9 times what? Half. Because of the sharing. So that's 9000. Okay, then you choose the lower. Then only you time a portion six over nine. See, that's why I say it can be very easily you make mistake in the exam because when you start to see the, the whole question becomes so long, uh, you get carried away. You get very do do do. You forgot what you're doing and you follow up. Uh, okay, be careful. Uh. Now, so that's the part to do with the house. Okay, the next part is the. The loan, uh, interest-free loan. Now I, I go back to thirteen one A on top. Okay, my interest subsidy. Now the subsidy is two thousand, uh, because the cost to the employer is two thousand. This is interest-free, uh. The loan is not exceeding three hundred thousand, so the whole interest is exempted. Okay, so need. Alright, and after that, they waive off the loan. Uh. So, waiver of the loan. Now, that one, 30,000 waive, you untong 30,000. So, 30,000 tax. Okay, you are given a free broadband. Uh. Employer give it to you. Now, broadband is exempted. New. Okay, then you also get your productivity award. The value is 3000 for the bracelet. So 2000 exempted, 1000 you tax. And then the professional membership fee that's paid by employer. Now because it's relevant to your work, so this is not subject to tax. Okay, that's it long. Finish already, right? All done. Okay, so I total up the thirteen one A. Yeah. So ninety three thousand. Thirty percent of 
ninety three is twenty seven thousand nine. So nine thousand is the lower. So six thousand. So ninety three plus one three five two one six eight forty six thousand. my gross right so we have three deduction that you need to claim okay one is the entertainment allowance now you can only deduct five thousand okay because your allowance is only five thousand so you claim until five thousand some more now the business traveling expense three thousand. It's purely for business traveling. You can claim three thousand. Okay, then the rental. What do you do? You must split into two, right? You're actually paying the rental on the furniture as well as the. Rental on the house. Now the furniture part, you know, you won't get a deduction, right? Because if you have used PV method, then deduction is not allowed. Okay, so we don't we don't allow you to claim deduction for PV. Now the rental on the house, then how much do you claim? Now you have to apportion back yourself, right? So how much do you apportion? So we're gonna take the PV, lo, sorry, the, the DV, lo, 2,000 for the house out of 2,400 and then multiply by the rental that you're paying for six months. Now that comes to 3K. Okay. So I got no space already, I'm going to the back. Okay. So my adjusted statutory income is ninety two three five zero. Alright? Okay, so B also done already. What's next? 4C. Okay, under 4C, we have dividend, which is always tax exam in F6. Okay, then we also have interest. Now, I show separately lah, so you can see. Now, the from the non-convertible debenture, the interest is tax exam. So nil from the convertible loan stock there's no exemption so the interest is two thousand so that's the whole thing okay the interest all done then we have rental right for the Rental. Now this one, the rental income is thirty six. So very straightforward. The interest expense. Huh? Interest expense is twelve thousand. So thirty six. Minus twelve, we have the adjusted adjusted statutory income twenty four. All right. Now, any other income? 
no more already, eh? so no more than at all together. Two satu lapan tiga lima kosong. What do you call this? Uh, we get income. Okay. What do you minus now? Huh? Current year business loss. How much? Eighteen. Okay. Once you minus the loss, then you minus donation. Now we mentioned donation just now. Okay, my approved cash donation to charity is maximum seven percent of one one eight three five zero. Now this is three thousand, uh, so surely enough. All right. Now then you have your. Sports and project of national interest. Now you can do it together, okay? The sports and project of national interest. So we need a working. Don't mind, I show you the working first, okay? We're gonna take 7% of 118350 minus the cash donation to approve institution, which is the 3000. So the balance is five two eight five now you compare with the actual donation which is nine thousand plus six thousand so we claim the lower uh, which in this case the lower is five two eight five huh? so you take the five two eight five and you minus One one eight three five zero Okay ninety two zero six five. All right, after you claim the donation, the total is ninety two zero six five. Okay, we only left with relief, and we have run through the question. So now we highlighted what they say is easier now. You just focus on those that you highlighted with blue. Uh, then you know where's the relief. Really, really, okay. Now I will first get relief for my personal deduction. So nine thousand for that. Okay. My life insurance and EPF we get the relief up to maximum. 6,000 you exceeded lah, okay all right the deferred annuity yeah, and private retirement scheme now in this case it's only the deferred annuity just 600 okay maximum is 3k now the broadband uh, is until Y two zero one two only. Okay, there's no more relief in this year. Now the child relief eleven year old we get normal relief one thousand. 
the education and medical insurance for child uh, maximum you can claim up to three thousand okay the national education savings scheme deposit now you can only claim the net saving maximum is six thousand so in this case up to five thousand five that's it right one one eight three five zero minus okay, sorry ninety two zero six five minus the relief So my chargeable income will be sixty six nine six five. Correct. Check if, if I miss anything. Now, so that's your CI. How much tax that Cami needs to pay? Right, following the tax rate just now. Huh? The first fifty thousand, the tax is two eight five zero. The next sixteen nine six five. Is at nineteen percent. TP would be six zero seven three three five. All right. <clears throat> okay. All right. So that would serve as the last example on the employment. So as I said, dividend interest. There's nothing much to learn. All right. So uh, when the second term start that time. We is at rental, so that's why I'm not discussing on the rental. All right, uh, we cancel a class before Raya, so that's that's why it was a slight adjustment. Okay, all right, so that's it. We end the session here.